Good evening, and welcome to Electronic Game Information and our quarantine EGI version of the show. This is the final week of quarantine EGI, so if you haven't sent us any uh, EGI-inspired art, please please do so. Please send it to electronicinformation at gmail.com. Uh, you can send it to our Twitter account. You can send it to our Instagram account, EGI with Robbie, Electronic Game Information, etc. cetera. Uh, looking for those wonderful uh, pieces of art, uh, just want to make sure there's a little bit of time that we can get those pieces and, and put them together into a special form that then we will uh, reshare with the with the audience, the viewing audience here on adultswim.com. We have an incredible show for you tonight with lots of surprises, but first we of course have the news and this is the this is the big one because we what 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 the news is tonight is uh, a very oh, so we have four we have four games four games uh rise of the argonauts uh spartan total warrior gladius and shadow none other than shadow of rome and the problem with the, this so it's not really so much of the news as it is a problem now because what happened was we got all these the news together for these four incredible uh, games that take place during the classical historical period. I think we can all agree that the classical historia, historical period between the rot, the rise, the the fall, the rise. So Greece and, and Rome were the classical period. What we think, what we, what we generally think of as the classical period is Greece. So those are four. These are four games that take place in that period between the rise and fall of these two incredible classical civilizations. Uh, the, and, 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 and in some ways, they, they showcase the clash, the clash of those civilizations. But unfortunately, the screenshots for the games got all mixed up. So we don't know which screenshots are which. So uh, we're going to have to just kind of go through there. I've asked Alan Resnick to jump into the to the to the news a little bit to the to jump into the show a little bit early so he can help me out with the news. Robbie, I can hear you. I'm going to be on the news. You're on the news, Alan. We have these four classic games, Rise of the Argonauts, uh, Shadow of Rome, can I Gladius, see, uh, okay. and Spartan Total Warrior. Spartan Total Warrior. So okay. let's, start, let's go ahead and start with, with Gladius because I know there's probably a lot of people uh, that are confused because they see the word Gladius. They think, of course, of the Gladius, Gladius uh, from the Warhammer 40K series of games. I think they think Warhammer of Gladius from Final Fantasy 15. Gladius is, of course, well, no, there's Gladius the, from Warhammer 40K, and then there's Gladius. And there's Gladios. From there's Gladios, but that's a, that's not those are those are don't take place in the classical period. The classical period between the fall, the rise and the fall of the of these great empires. And, and so, and uh, what's the news? The news is that we got these four games all ready to go for the news, and then the screenshots got all mixed up, Alan. Got it. But we got to make sure that you guys don't get it mixed up. When we talk about Gladius, we're not talking about Gladius. Because this is a Warhammer 40k game. Warhammer 40k, of course, is the wonderful gaming universe that brought us such wonderful uh, strategy games and Space Hulk uh, and 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 uh, and uh, the Warhammer 40k Fire Warrior, the first-person shooter uh, for the PlayStation 2 and uh, PC, where you take uh, control of a Fire Warrior as they he or they or. He, we're not um, we're not clear uh, who the fire warrior is. It's a it, it could be one of those uh, characters that's sort of a blank slate that you can kind of put your own personality into. I don't not sure if there are uh, dialogue trees where you can actually s s spend time figuring out what the fire warrior is going to say to the people that the fire warrior is fire is fight. You can't fight fire with fire when you're in the Warhammer 40k universe, but you can fight. You can't use Greece to fight Rome, is what I'm saying, Alan. And, and Robbie, why am I on the news? You're on the news because we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go straight away. Tell me, Alan. It, it, it think when you think about the four games that we have uh, lined up tonight. Uh, why so Gladius? Uh, why so Gladius? Uh, is this uh, does this screenshot look like it's from Gladius, Shadow of Rome, uh, Total War, Spartan, Total Warrior, or Rise of the Argonauts? That looks like it's from Gladio, Gladius Shadow of Rome. Okay, so we're going to mark this down as Gladius Shadow... No, Gladius is... I can't tell, Rob, because all the images look ugly. And wow. Well, the images... These are clear. These are clear. These are the clearest images that you can find. Uh, these are EGI exclusives. No one else is talking about this. These are hardened warriors, Alan. So these are hardened warriors from these uh, incredible classical periods when being a warrior meant being uh, uh, something akin to... An artist, because there's nothing, uh, there's nothing greater or worse, I think, 
than the art of war because you make your canvas is carnage, Alan. Robbie, I think you're using the term news in a very loose way. Okay, so uh, right here we have another wonderful screenshot. This this could be from any of those four games. We can't tell you uh, which, what, we can't tell which of the games they are. It could be Gladys, could be Shadow of Rome, could be Total Warrior, or it could be Rise of the Argonauts. I think that's probably from the animated movie The Crudes or The Crudes. It's not, there's, no, there's, there's no animated movies. These, this is that. This is, of course, he could be saying anything, but we imagine that he's saying, "This is how is this how I want to be remembered?" Because he's he's fighting for his life. You can only assume in these coliseums, in these various uh, uh, the the gladiators are fighting to the death, if, uh, unless sometimes they get to live longer. So to fight another day. So these are these are the classic, these are depictions of that classical historical period that you won't see on any other video game talk show on adultswim.com. De definitely not. Definitely so, not. This is uh, pure the, EGI. Our, so this is a this this could be a character could be having an argument. He could be having it out with somebody. He could be meeting his friends. Uh, this is to hard. Engage in this. It's incredibly hard. This is this is this is why I asked you to come in here because I couldn't do this on my own. The the everything got mixed up. Uh, there's just no, there's no, uh, there's no news to really to report. The, there's the, definitely there's not. Just a, there's there's just not a print out, print out of Splatterhouse, the cover for Splatterhouse 3 for some reason. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is mm -hmm. that these are games that need to be recognized as, as, a, as a, it's, it's a lost period of time between around 2003 and 2007 when these, when these incredible uh, action adventure games and action RPGs and, uh, in Gladius is Gla Gladius. It's Gladius. It's Gladius. Gladius was a a turn based um, grid base. A turn based grid base. There's two bases. So there's the turn base. There's the grid base. Uh, at, at, from Lucas Arts, the people that behind, of course, Star Wars. George Lucas, the inventor of Star Wars, and many other wonderful films. Um, like the one about the cars and the right. sort of diner. And and exactly. The except, uh, except, except, except in this case, it was uh, it was Gladius or it was Glade. And we don't. And this character could have been from any of those games. I mean, Robbie, that's I the wonderful see, thing about this I time period. I can't tell what the image is. The quality it's, a, is it's, an gonna... it's, a, it's an incredible, powerfully powerful warrior asking uh, asking deep. You know, looking looking at at into the future, not knowing what is happening, not knowing if he might live another day, if the thumb the thumb will be up or the thumb will be down. Because when the thumb's up, when the thumb's down, that's when you can, that's when the, that's what the emperor gets to do. And imagine that's how, how these, that's how these countries worked back then. Absolutely. And imagine how compelling this segment would be if you and I were in the same room and I, and you can't stop me from so coming. What, I can't, I can definitely, we can't, we can't be in the same room because there's all of these restrictions, but a four, uh, the fact that we, we were in the same room, what well, I would do is I would actually I get, I would get two or three other people and we would just lay out all the screenshots uh, from these four incredible games. This could be from uh, a game like Shadow of Rome. It could be from Gladius or... Ro I'm going to head over to your place player. and you can show me in person and then I'll, and then it will be together forever after that. Got it? Well, Alan, listen, I, 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 I appreciate your passion. I know you're such a big fan of the show. It's uh, we, love. We, 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 do miss, we do miss... Each other, uh, the, yes. the 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 combination of, of of friendship and professionalism. I think that we have a delicate balance there, so we yes. got to make sure to yes. keep that balance yes. going. Absolutely, especially when we're trying to, especially when we're drawing these lines of forever. distinction between very similar, uh, very similar games that uh, are actually very different games. Very much, very much. That is very much the case. Yes. So these are all uh, incredible games. We don't know which ones they are. We just we have the covers. We have the screenshots. Not, we have these. Is the, this is the news. This is the news that everybody. News. That no one is willing. No one's willing to talk about these games anymore. Why? You talk about. I don't know. You talk about Shadow of Rome. People want to talk about Dead Rising because that was the game that that was supposedly made from the 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 ashes of a sequel to Shadow of Rome and it became a much more popular. Uh, game series, so we don't hear about Shadow of Rome anymore. We don't hear about Gladius anymore because uh, Star Wars became such a huge uh, deal. Now everything is just Star Wars. And uh, in terms of Rise of the Argonauts and Spartan Total Warrior, any anything could have happened. Talk about Star Wars Fallen Jedi. That is a 
wonderful uh, recent game in the star, a new chapter in the Star Wars franchise. But it is not a game set in the classical period between the rise of the Greek civilization and the fall of the Roman civilization. We no, also know, it's set we after the prequel. It's set right after the prequels, I think. Do we? I don't know if we do enough to recognize the Holy Roman Empire. I think I do. Well, back to you, Alan. Thank you so much for your input. We got it. We're, we've got a great show. We got plenty of. We got. We got all the screenshots that we need. I mean, we could be here for for days. Yes. Well, I understand, Alan. You have a you have a special report. This just in. This is an EGI exclusive special report from Alan Resnick. It's a new segment, Alan. That's right. I'm gonna get my. Um, that's a, that's the new segment alert. So you know it's coming. It's it's never been f- before seen here on Electronic Game Information yeah, on, adult, right. on AdultSwim.com. Com. It's Alan and Robbie and the new segment. Go take it away, okay. Alan. And if 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 is it is it? Is Who what? Am I? You're Robbie. I'm Alan. I'm doing a brand new segment on right. EGI, and you know that people are excited when I do these segments. This new segment is what it. No, was it like what how we remembered Headhunter? Was it like what we was it it was it like what we how remembered? No. Was it like what how we remembered colon Headhunter Redemption Edition with special correspondent me, Alan Resnick. Special correspondent Alan Resnick, big fan of this big fan of Alan Resnick, big fan of the show. Uh, Alan, I'm so excited that you're finally, someone has finally taken the time to give this recognition to this incredible uh, Headhunter game, uh, this incredible uh, spy thriller action game that, that I, I has been steamrolled by the, by the steamroller of, by the steamroller of history, the same steamroller that I think steamrolled the whole, the Roman Empire and the uh, Greek Empire. Was it like what, how you remembered? It was. Well, let's because find out. Those, that, well, because what happened was they expanded too quickly. They invested too much in their, in, in, in their, they looked inward is what happened. They looked inward, they looked inward and outward too much at the same time and they collapsed. When you think back to Headhunter Redemption, was, what was how you remembered it? Do you remember some shooting, some action, some stealth? Then yes. Headhunter Redemption is like what how you remember. Do you remember tough characters like Jack and Lisa X? If so, then again, the answer comes back, yes. Headhunter Redemption is like what how you remember. Should I keep going? Yeah, well, Alan, I want to stop you there for a sec because I think you overlooked one big part of Headhunter Redemption, which is well, the vehicle done. sections. Well, I'm not done. So maybe, maybe that's coming down the pipe in this segment. So coming down the road more like because you're in that you're in that motorcycle you're going fast you're you got the mission it's your mission Alan it's your segment take it away Alan Robbie's in the back seat I'm driving the segment and Robbie is in the back seat just along for the ride not driving if you remember smooth gameplay and good graphics then no headhunter redemption is not like what how you remember because Headhunter Redemption is one of those old buggy games that no one played, whose world looked jagged and strange, like if they attached some sort of a sensor to a lab rat's brain in an attempt to recreate images from the rat's dream. By today's standards, Headhunter Redemption would almost look like nothing at all. Headhunter Redemption was released in 2004 on the PlayStation to and maybe on the Xbox. If you are some sort of savant with photographic memory, then absolutely yes, Headhunter Redemption is like what how you remembered. But if you were like the rest of us, then you don't remember Headhunter Redemption because you never heard of it until just moments ago. Back to you, Rob. Back to you, Alan, because I have to, I have to, that's a wonderful, wonderful sentiments that you have here, but you have to, I have to uh, ask you about the vehicle sections there because I, you did uh, manage to skip over that and also the fact that Headhunter Redemption, the redemption was, of course, that the Headhunter had come uh, to us from the Dreamcast uh, after a, 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 a great yes. deal of absence. There was an there, absence. There, yeah, so there's a game called Headhunter for Dreamcast. 
and it wasn't a hit, but they, they went ahead and did a sequel and it wasn't a hit. And the sequel didn't come out, it was, was for PlayStation and maybe the Xbox. Back to you, Robbie. Back to you, Alan. Uh, what a wonderful, uh, what's the connection here, Alan? What's the connection between what we're talking about with Headhunter Redemption, what we're talking about with games like Spartan Total Warrior, Shadow of Rome, Rise of the Argonauts, and Gladius. I think all, I think it, based on the screenshots, Headhunter Redemption and all those other games you mentioned are all kind of those kind of back in the past, forget about them crud games that people don't like. I'm coming to your house. You gotta, you gotta. You gotta stay there, Alan, because we we need we got the whole thing we got the whole show we got the whole show that's happening now live we're happen we're on li- we're on live we're live here on AdultSwim.com. I've got these screenshots. You've got the head under redemption. We've got to find that road to redemption that Jack Carver must have been looking for when he got on that bike for the first time, rode out into the cityscape. This massive, these massive uh, levels, these massive maps and environments that you could uh, just do any, you could go anywhere, you could do anything, at least in theory. Of course, that was not the reality of what happened, but in theory, you could have been able to do that in Headhunter Redemption. In theory, you could do almost anything in any game, in theory. Right. Except for Shadow of Rome, because that was pretty, pretty much just... Uh, just uh, gla- gladiator fighting and uh, sneaking around a-, a big house. Take your word for it. I don't play that kind of thing. But well, what I think is so incredible about the the about Shadow of Rome, Alan, is what I was saying earlier about the Dead Rising series. Because I know that you're a big Dead Rising expert, so I know that you're you've probably tracked that game series from the first Dead Rising game to Dead Rising Two, Dead Rising Three, Dead Rising Four, and now Dead Rising Five. Probably, yeah. And of course, remakes of several of those games. We have, we have, we have. We you look around, you can bear, you can barely move your your elbows on the on the uh, in the game store without bumping into a Dead Rising game. The Rome Rome casts a long shadow. Absolutely. Where's that guy? Where Where is he going? That guy that's sneaking around those big houses. I'm not going to sneak around. I'm just going to come right up to the front door and knock. No, 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 no. Here, here's 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 the where you got the you 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 got to Let's dial it back for a second because we're 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 losing track of the shadow. We we we've we've caught something. We've caught the shadow, and you can't hold a shadow because it's not there. That's right. Great. Well, thank you for that special report on Headhunter Redemption, Alan. Uh, such a great report of uh, such an overlooked uh, gem of a game. Uh, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we will continue our living coverage, our living coverage that we've been doing every single episode of the Quarantine G- EGI, our living coverage of Kingdoms of Kingdom Amalur, Amalur Reckoning. Reckoning. So Can't we'll wait. take a quick break and be right back.
And we are uh, back, Alan. Hey. Are you excited to get right in, right back into the uh, into the thick of things in the Feylands with Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning? Yes, the, my favorite part of the show is this this run and been the Kingdoms we've of done, Amalur Reckoning. So, every episode segments. we played a little bit. We've gotten a little bit farther. We've experienced a little, a smaller part of this incredible game. This what incredibly a massive game. Yeah. But unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it short tonight, Alex. We have a big surprise for the EGI audience. What is, why? Why? What are we well, doing? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a brand. I don't new, like it's, it's a brand. It's not a new segment. It's a, it's a, it's a segment that we've done before. We have a guest, which is a, the actual CEO of Night Dive Studios, uh, Stephen Kick, is here. Uh, so if you guys are a uh, big fan of, of Night Dive Studios here on EGI, I'm, I'm a little bit starstruck. So if I'm acting like I, I can't hold my so like together, it's I simply know. because I, I just am so excited. We, I'm such a big fan of everything you guys are doing uh, over there in uh, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, the games that you guys are, are, are remastering and putting out are, are just absolutely great. You, you, you brought back one of the, the great games of my childhood, Turok 2, uh, in a way that I never thought possible. I'm playing Robbie, it. You playing gotta Turok tell me. 2 Why in widescreen on a handheld. I don't know why we did that, but... I just wanted to say I'm such a big fan of Alan being such a big fan of you, Robbie. Oh, thank you. It's a wonderful sentiment. Alan's That's such a big true. fan of the show. Alan is, is, is very, very much a part of the show. Uh, very, we wouldn't be able to do the show without, without him. So, but we have I this just, interview we got it. We, we can't talk about Alan all night. We got to talk about, uh, about Stephen Kick and Night Dive Studios. Or we could talk about Robbie. No, we got to. So, Stephen Kick, uh, why don't you talk about just Robbie. let's, let's break the ice a little bit. Night Dive Studios, where does that yeah. name come from? Night Dive came from my personal love of night diving. It just okay. seemed to kind of fit the philosophy of what we do, which is kind of comb the depths for treasure that has been long lost. Mm -hmm. uh, classics, if you will. And uh, when you're doing a night dive, it's very dark. Uh, it can be frightening, but there can be a, a high reward factor there if you know what to look for. That is, what an incredible, what an incredible uh, it's sentiment! What a, what a, what a uh, eloquent way of putting that. And I have to, uh, I have to admit, uh, when I, when I hear about somebody going down into the water, uh, plumbing the depths in the middle of the night, uh, I, I think, uh, what, what the hell are you thinking? I mean, there's, it's, da it's dangerous as hell. There's, they'll, they'll search a. a alligators and and snakes and uh there's just like weird bugs that get under your in your boots and in your shoes you can't be going into the water that late at night it is pretty frightening at first uh you do have a torch which is just a light source mm -hmm. and uh and there's a, a whole that's different a sort of that's sort of an english word alan if you torch <laughs> what they call flashlights in england or in some some parts of canada or australia don't tell when, me. Yeah. Talk to me. Talk to them. When the, you're under the water, that's a hint. Uh, well, okay. Well, <sighs> uh, th I think that's uh, uh, really interesting. And unfortunately, we're going to have to start with the hard questions now, Steven. So, are you are you ready for this? I yeah. All right, because I, I'm not gonna I'm gonna throw lots of curveballs your way because I think it, what, even though I respect the, the hell out of you guys and whatever it is that <laughs> you're doing out there in uh, Vancouver, Washington, we gotta ask you the big question of the evening, which is what the hell's going on with Call of Cthulhu: Destiny's End? Where is that game? Can you get it? Can you make it? Can you put it out? We we know that there's a we know that what's it's sort of like what do you call it? it's not a gameplay video it's a it's a, a Killzone Two PlayStation Three. Uh, E3, it, you know what I'm talking about, Stephen. It's it's it, not the game. It was a trailer. It, it's a trailer, but it, it's a target video. It's a target video for Call of Cthulhu Destiny's End. So we know that there's something out there. Those there models, those uh, character models, those weird lumpy creatures that we can only assume are the uh, weirdos from uh, Rats in the Walls. And uh, I, I got to say, if you can, if you guys can pull this off, you can make history because you'll be remastering a game that never came out in the first place. That I it's want. quite a challenge. I mean, I think we're personally up for it. Um, last I heard, Dark Corners of the Earth was developed in a cottage somewhere on the English countryside, and it, you know, Destiny's End could still be there. We really Destiny, don't so know. So you got to go to. So you got to get out the water at night, and you got to get on one of those overnight flights to England 
yeah. find this find this dang cottage. That's where the source code is. What you're telling me. That's where the character models are. The environments. This it's was a, this, was a this is a reimagining of the Call of Cthulhu universe in the style of a uh, uh, wonderful Resident Evil Four, Alan. Mm-hmm. I don't understand? I'm pulling up right the, around uh, the same time. The Alan's pulling up the website right now, so we're doing the deep dive. We're here. We're deep doing the night dive. dive. So, or we're, we're the night divers. Dot com. I mean, I think we should all just kind of embrace it and just go for that dive. We've never released a game that's never been released before. Wow, that's to make that clear. But I think that you know that's probably the next step for us as a company all is, right. to, is to find these things that have never been made. And let me let me talk about your comp- competition for a second there, Stephen Kick, because there's some comp- there is some there are some people that are doing similar things to what you're doing. I want to talk especially about Pico Interactive, the wonderful ah. people at, down at Pico Interactive that re released that re released the Jaguar 64 uh, version of Impossible on a cartridge, which was very unexpected uh, format for that uh, game uh, for those of us, Alan. Uh, Alan's, of course, the big Impossible export expert, so maybe he could uh, comment on that. Yeah. Uh, back to you, Alan. So Pico Robbie, Interactive is, geez. of course, uh, in chart. Now they have the licensing for ODT Escape or Die Trying, which, uh, of course, big fans of the show. We've uh, we've covered in terms of uh, showing actual king uh, kingdom kingdom showing the gameplay from Escape or Die Trying here on the King. Inc. We're Reckoning. Reckoning. So they got the they got the license first. They got there. They got to that finish line before you guys did. Was did it hurt? How bad did it hurt? Did it was it a burning sensation? Was it was was it painful to know that these uh, that these people who are basically just making fake versions of games that came out on the TurboGrafx 16 were actually uh, in charge of this incredible IP, Escape or Die Trying? It's wow. something that keeps me up almost nightly. Um, sometimes if I manage to fall asleep, it's, it's cold sweats. It's, it's night terrors. It's just it's a burning sensation. You want to take, you want to take, you want to take the, you want to take the blood back. You, the, the, uh, blood, you want to take the blood out. That's right. And you know, uh, Pico, Eli, if you're listening, I'm coming for ODT. He's, he's, that, that's this is an EGI exclusive. Night Dive Studios is going to uh, is going to do a hostile corporate takeover of of Pico Interactive, and this is this is a this is a this is a moment. This is a turning point in the this particular part of the games industry that makes remasters of these wonderful old uh, 3D in, engine games uh, mm-hmm. like ODT, like Turok 2, like uh, Power Slave, Metal Fatigue. Power the gloves oh, really that, have that, to that, start that, coming off because if we're not careful, I mean, Pico right. is going to get to Destiny's end before us, oh, and that's God. just can't happen. You can't let that happen. Those those those, those Texas uh, Rangers down there in in, in Texas uh, can't get their hands on this incredible IP. That's this incredible game that could have that could have uh, changed the world of uh, Lovecraft based action adventure games may i Alan? offer a little bit of just uh, unsolic- absolutely let's hear it let's hear it. Advice. exclusive unsolicited, unsolicited advice from Alan advice Resnick. i'm just on the, on the site i'm looking through the catalog of games that you've released i i i don't understand why, why maybe you could release a game re-release a game like cyberpunk 2077 or half-life alex or um any of those newer games that people enjoy because a lot of these games I never heard of and they're they're like kind of Robbie quote unquote Robbie games. I mean, Doom Eternal, it just came out, but yes, you, yes, you know, I yeah, I think it's due point. for a re-release. I just it's Thank, it's okay. ready. It's it's ready, it's ready to, to come yeah. out again. I think it's old uh, news. Okay, no, I think make it that would again. that would be good because you have an older an old Doom, and I, I just think people would really enjoy a new Doom. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Okay. I don't know about that, Alan. I think that people, I think that people are looking for the you old doom. I, I think right, that Robbie. people are looking for games like, like Power Slave. And I, I would like to talk. Uh, this is where the gloves come off because this is the question I've been waiting. They to should ask do for Final Fantasy time. Seven, the Alan, new one. I, I, this is the this is the question I've been waiting to ask for a long time. For the this is a Night Dive Studios question. Right. It's a real guest. 
So this is the real. This is the real gas. Get. This is the gas in the car. It's <clears throat> Power Slave. What you guys are doing a re-release, a remaster of Power Slave or Exhumed, and I want to know: Is it the Saturn version or the PlayStation version? Because those are two different games. They have striking similarities, you might say, but those are two very different game engines. And the DOS version is different too. Well, so, the DOS, the DOS version is just the PlayStation version. Let's be honest. DOS? It, no, no, it's completely different. The DOS oh. version is more or less a straightforward okay. shooter using the build engine. The PlayStation version is okay. You know what? They're very similar. We're, okay, thank we're you, on PlayStation. Thank, 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 thank you for, for validating me, Stephen Kick. This is why we brought you on the show. Bobby, they're going on to PlayStation that you're, Five. You're and you're talking about actually, DOS. You're making money off of this stuff. I don't get this. Yeah, I mean, we're making some money, um, just enough so that we can go out and keep, you know, scraping the barrel. <laughs> we gotta ask. We, gotta, we in your opinion, and this is this is no no uh, no. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to, to to come down too hard on Megapixel. But what the hell's going on with that Panzer Dragoon remake? Stephen Kick of Night Dive Studios. You know, I'm not entirely sure what a Panzer Dragoon is. I mean, it's a dragon. Can somebody explain to me what that is? It's it's two O's. You know, it's like a, a an oon is like a spear. An oon is a spear. I think. So. I mean, Alan, you're this you're the spear expert. I mean, you tell us. A Panzer Dragoon is a just a weird way of saying dragon. It's a dragon with a spear nose. Sure. Have you ever had crab rangoon? I've had tra- I, rangoon, uh, crab rangoon. <laughs> no. Uh, but I, what I have had is, is a is a t- terrible time finding out what how the hell twenty five dollars turns into this buggy uh, low low uh, depth of field mess that is the Panzer Dragoon remake. I mean, you know, can I, those I people be trusted it? with the, with that IP? And can you, after you finish your hostile takeover of Pico, Inter- they're a publicly traded company. People go interactive. Right, I would hope so because that's the only way we'll be able to take yeah, them over. Yeah, because you can't take over just a privately owned company, a family. So we got to what we got to do is we got to get them to we got to get them to list on the stock market. So we're gonna and, do and, the you list. Know, we can go. What we have the yes, but if we list on the Hong Kong stock market, then no one else is going to notice. Why do you Why do you know all this stuff? So we got to go over there, Stephen Kick to Hong Kong. You can't go anywhere these days. Well, oh, we can't yeah. go any, except we can't go anywhere. This is the problem. This is the problem. With Pico Interactive. This is my entire issue with them because they've got this great, they've got a great IP in the ODT Escape or Die Trying, and I can't even get to Hong Kong. They've also got Super Noah's Ark 3D. Yeah. Alan. Yes. So. Licensing. This is this is this is a big part of your business. Uh, yeah. This is a uh, how you should how license is, Spider-Man you, to make a the new Spider-Man game. You should license. You should what you should license in terms of Spider-Man is uh, of course Spider-Man sixty four or Web of Shad- Shadows for the thirty two X. Maximum Carnage is what I would personally go. Maximum for. Carnage. Interesting yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Many Red Cart. Would, everything. Comic book. All included. Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. Atari Jaguar. Atari. Hmm. It hasn't been released on that system yet, so we could do something you old. Could do something. You could use the extra power. The extra power of the 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 CPU in the Atari Jaguar, because we all know the graphics card is just practically not even there. I mean, so what else should what, we license? What else should we? I mean, we could. What I I want to know is if. Your license, okay. So you license. How, you, what do you do to license things? Because I'm ta- I'm taking notes. Well, I figure out what it is I want to license. Figure it out. And then I'll generally go to MobyGames.com. Moby Games. Moby Games. Which has great, great re- repository of uh, screenshots and, and and chat rooms that Moby Games is. I EGI would not be the show that it is without Moby Games. It's really an incredible resource, uh, mostly because you can go and look up any game, and there's usually a comprehensive list of credits of those people, the developers who are involved in making the game. Um, I find out who they are, and I basically stalk them. What do you do? They, you go to their house. Go to their house. You call them. You call them on the line. And they keep telling you not to come to your house, but you go to their house 
anyways, and then they hang out with you, and and you get to actually just spend just have a fun blast of a time hanging out. It's happened before. You hang out with these game developers, these classic game developers. They must they must impart to you some wisdom. Hey, it was really tough porting this to the N64. I had to use the RAM pack. We didn't have Rumble support. Mm -hmm. No one was there for us. Uh, you must get some. It's it's sort of like visiting the old bards of. Uh, It's exactly I, like Greece. that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've never been served mead um, a, or any other beverages of that type from that era. I have a question. When you licensed the seventh guest in the 11th hour, how terrifying of an experience was that? Like, did you have to go speak to a, a ghoul or go into a, a, a mansion at night? The Stock Mansion? That's right. I've been there. And that's exactly what we had to do. Oh, yeah. And um, unfortunately, my CD-ROM drive only goes up to 2x, so it was a bit of a, Jeez. It was a slower off. experience. But uh, actually, the people inside were very um, receptive to the idea of re-releasing the game on which the house was based. Oh, my God. And uh, we were able to get another game from them called Tender Love and Care. Tender Love and Care? What kind mm -hmm. of a game is that? It's an interactive movie. Okay. Uh, I think it's got John Hurt in it. I wanted to, I wanted to take a quick break from talking about these wonderful uh, point and click seventh guest eleventh hour games, and I want to ask you a, a quick question, which is how if if someone were to hypothetically uh, reach out to uh, Todd McFarlane and Jim Valentino and ask if they could make a video game with the characters that they made spawn in Shadowhawk and take Ooh. those characters and put them into a kind of Lovecraftian setting version of New England in the 16th, 1600s. You know, could it's... I, could I, could they, could I, could that hypothetical be, uh, could I, could they, could I do that? I think you and I are on very similar wavelengths. Mm. Um, I have a copy of Shadow Man number one on my nightstand. I was reading it last night. Oh my god! He breaks their backs. That's the that's the lead. Yeah, it's incredibly violent. So um, you can imagine so a wonderful character like Shadowhawk if he was let loose in this uh, in this 17th century uh, kind of uh, pre. I mean, it is colonial America. I almost said pre-colonial, but it's right in the middle of that period, isn't it? And you can imagine that Shadowhawk let loose on those uh on the puritan uh, setting could uh, do a lot of damage break a lot of backs find witches and uh demons and warlocks and of course uh, if there was what if it could possibly be that that shadowhawk and his friend spawn who's the todd mcfarland character let's not forget mm -hmm. they could meet a little boy who lives oh on God. the rooftops and his yeah. name could be philip and he could look at them and tell them what they're doing and that could be a huge aspect of the first chapter of what becomes an expansive uh, world-building game where you start in a very small town, uh, and the town is called Gloomsbrook, and that idea. town just is uh, walled off, and it's also surrounded by poisonous fog, and you have to get out of the, you have to get out of the fog, but in, because you have to find a talisman. The talisman is, is someone knows where the talisman is. This is such a good you idea. find the, the talisman, you have to go into a basement and fight a creature oh that has been held prisoner by one of the villagers that this that philip is going robbie to wait be. wait 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 robbie i think you should um not talk about this in such detail just maybe ask broad questions about licensing and yeah so what, how, has some who, funding who, questions but don't go into detail it, about give it. me todd give me todd mcfarland's uh cell phone number i don't have that uh, but uh, I do he, have. You can get it. He's got a copy of Uncanny X Men 266 signed by Jim Lee. Can Does we help get you, that up Robbie? on the screen? I don't have that currently on me. No. Well, here's um, the, pro uh, the pro. Let me let me let me back up. This kid on the roof named Phil. Can we Phillip. have his name is Philip? And he says, and he always is on the rooftops. It's like, can, can we have him turn into the Max? No, he's got to stay the kid. 
I mean, the Max can be in there. I mean, the Max should be. I want the. I, could be the Max. Could be Chapel. Uh, could be uh, 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 the Silver Lady from Wildcats. Oh yeah. Um, mm. It could be uh, also. You know, talking about. Tur- I mean, you guys. You're the Turok expert, but you can have these Valiant characters from Deathmate. I mean, I could call Archer them and up. Archer Armstrong, and we can, the Eternal we can bring Warrior, Exo Man of War. All the Valiant heroes in, and the 1990s version of the MCU just kind of. In that puritanical Lovecraft exactly, setting, exactly, exactly. So we gotta go, we gotta get these people on the phone. We gotta get Jim Shooter on the phone. We gotta talk to them about licensing. Uh, you're you're a lawyer, so you can do that for me now. Robbie, ask ask after for money. Robbie, Alan, ask for money. What's it? What's that, Alan? If you a- you should ask him for money. Can I have a uh, hundred thousand dollars? Let's put a game design document together first, and then we'll talk about budget. Alan, he's going to hear the pitch. He's, That's so great, because Robbie has pages, step is, pages of dialogue yeah. and gi- diagrams of how the inventory works. And so, yeah, there's, there's, I'm not, I mean, I, we can't, we can't, I don't want to say that anything is real, is that, but if like you wanted to have a really interesting inventory system, which I know is what game developers like really, that's what p- publishers do. You have a working title or a code inventory name? systems. Uh, it could be a wagon that they pull around wherever they go. Do you have a working title or a code name for this project? It's just a game that I made up. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, I got my parents. Okay. What happened was we didn't have video games in my household, but then my parents got divorced, and then and then I had a lot. What platforms would you uh, want to support? Thirty two X. <laughs> Robbie, don't sell yourself short. This could go on any on all of the pl- major platforms. I want it on 32x. Sega CD 32x because you got a good combination of things. You yeah, can I want that. I want Robbie, that. No. I want that crisp. I want that crisp Sega CD audio. I want people to be able to take the disc out of the Sega CD disc drive, put it in their CD player, and enjoy that Damn. sweet music from uh, that we don't know what it is. Robbie maybe, wants maybe it to be on dialogue. Steam. Robbie dialogue wants this to be, to be on Steam and maybe on Switch and PlayStation well, let's get it, let's, 4. Let's get it. Let's get a let's get a, col- let's get a collection. Major... Of, I mean, we're, this is like a this is like whether you call a uh, this like a brainstorming meeting. This is what people in the industry are doing. So this is what Night Dive CEO Stephen Kick does when him and his team sit down. They're like, "What are we going to do?" And we're just like, "Oh, we got to get IMA pit. We got to get limited run. We got to get them to put out 32x cartridges of this game." Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's this is printed. We're practically printing money we're here uh, live on adultswim.com is this live yes i think so i'll check so uh uh steven kick uh we're having such an incredible time i wonder if uh you would actually be willing to stick around for a little bit longer uh we're going to take a quick break but when we come back we're going to be doing the list and we would love for you to be a guest on the list robbie i can also just do the list alan let's do the list just, we're going to do after the break. So you're okay with sticking around? Sure. All right. So Love we're going to take list. a quick break. We'll come back with the list uh, with CEO, Night Dive Studio CEO, Stephen mm-hmm. Kick, and uh, friend, best friend of the show because what? he's going to get this. He's, he's, he's got the ideas that we – he's got – you have the – I've got the ideas. You've got the connections. We're going to make it happen. Let's take a break. Did you say best friend? <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
And we're back with the list uh, with special guest uh, Night Dive CEO, actual Night Dive CEO. We're uh, such a big fan of uh, Stephen Kick and everything that they're doing are up there in Vancouver, CEO? Washington. Uh, we are going to uh, have him join us for the list. And this is a very special list because these are all games that I would like Night Dive to remake for for I mean for the show for the show. And, you, and we could talk about them on the show. You could remake the games, and then we could talk about them on the show. And it's synergist, synerg, it's syner, it's a synergist. It's we're synergist, we're synergy. So I'm just going to blindly approve all these titles on the list. Well, that's okay. All you got to do is take take a step back, put your feet up. This is the list. Let's dive right on in. So first up on the list is Fade to Black. Fade to Black, Black of course, is the 3D uh, shooter sequel to uh, none other than Flashback Quest of Identity. So we oh, think boy. about the Quest of Identity uh, that must have been going through the people that were making flat Fade to Black for the PC and PlayStation 1 when it came out, but wouldn't it be great if the Night Dive uh, team take a, took a crack at re-releasing this game on the Nintendo Switch and Modern Platform? Steven Kick. Did, um... You said Fade to... Fade to Black. Fade to Black. Next up on the list is Dead Space Extraction. Dead Space, Dead Space oh. Extraction is, of course, the uh, incredible uh, Dead Space tie-in game for originally for the Nintendo Wii, the first Wii, but it was, of course, later ported to PlayStation Store and a number of other platforms. But this is a light gun game set in the Dead Space universe. Uh, sort of a more recent game than maybe what you guys are normally doing. But, hey, why not talk about the Dead Space Extraction coming out now on the Nintendo Switch? Are you ready to announce it? Steven Not Kick. quite ready, but it is co-op. I approve. It is, co it is ca couch co-op, which is which is what we're what we're what we're going to be missing so much when we come back from all these uh, quarantine uh, EGI episodes. Is that we're going to be needing more couch co-op games? So it's sort of like the Dead Space uh, extraction is sort of like Overcooked, but in Dead Space. Uh, Grudge Warriors. It. Grudge Warriors Never for the played place. It. Oh, what's it? Got to got to play it, Stephen Kick, because you can't be you can't actually have a decision. You can't make a decision about whether or not you're going to publish a Dead Space Extraction remaster unless you're publish. Just you play the Dead Space Extraction remaster. It's uh, about Grudge, time. Grudge Warriors for the PlayStation One, Alan. What you're, when I say Grudge Warriors, what, what what's the first to topic that comes into your head? Uh, I would go is it ahead. Vehicular combat, because if yes, it is. Then it would be right. The, the the plane comes in, it drops the jeep in the world, and the right. vehicle combat begins uh, immediately with Night, Grudge, yeah. Grudge Wars. And this Grudge is an incredible game, Stephen Keck, because you, this was one of the first. This is one of the first uh, publisher that would release ten dollars PlayStation games, brand new Grudge Warriors for the PlayStation One. Are you willing to <laughs> announce right now that you are going to acquire the IP for Grudge Warriors at a nine ninety nine price tag? Yeah, right. Did I just you, announce that? I, I guess that's what we're doing. You just announced also we could we're looking for that Stephen Kick endorsement. We're looking for that announcement of the Night Dive Studios uh, Elemental Gear Bolt. Elemental Gear Bolt, uh, of course, is another light gun game that I would love that would would be perfect uh, for that couch co-op similar to Dead Space Extraction. In fact, if you think about it this way, you could have put the Dead Space Extraction and the Elemental Gear Bolt into one into one disc or cartridge that limited run games could put out on the Nintendo Switch. It could be done by Christmas, and that thing would sell like hotcakes, I'm telling you. Elemental Gear Bolt, Dead Space Extraction, light gun games, where did they come from? Who knows? When you're pointing the gun, you shoot, and you get to point off the screen. You point the gun off the screen to reload, Alan. Right. Can so, we just make a console built inside of a light gun, and okay. then everybody buys the light gun? This is sort of this is the kind of this is the kind of this is That's the kind of encouragement idea. that this show absolutely needs. I think I think Stephen Kick, what you need to do is you actually need to make a retro console similar to what the TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine, because uh, that's a really nice console, and they they have a really good menu system, and that's what these things are really missing is really good menu systems. I think we can all agree. Or so, you could make a like, real gun like a light that gun. feels like a, to a toy, but, and but, and when you shoot it, you feel like it's like life is a game, but it's actually exactly a real like gun. I, we were in Las Vegas and they had these games. They, they, had, they had these incredible. They had a light gun game that was just a BB gun that you shoot at the TV screen. The and screen it hurt like break. hell. Anyway, you fit a console inside the super scope. I, 
You tell me. Uh, you're the Night Dive CEO. I have a I'm couple just, ideas I'm behind I'm you guys. I'm a, just... I'm a talk show host. This is the list. We got to keep going through the list. Pandora's the Tower. List. Pandora's Stat- Tower, of course, is one of those great uh, action ad- adventure games that came out late in the, the Wii's life cycle. That you're going to see some Wii games on the list tonight uh, that I would love to see remastered on the Nintendo Switch. Are you considering the? Are you considering, or have you secretly considered the Pandora's Tower? How do you get to the top of that tower? You fight your way to the top with the whip and the chain and it looks like castlevania uh looks like those castlevania games that came out on the playstation 2 steven kick so it's a 2d game it's a 3d game the saturn version of quake is on the list tonight the saturn version of quake is especially interesting because it was made by lobotomy studios the people behind the power saturn slave. version power slave or, or zoom so nobody else is talking about this no other show when they talk people talk about quake all the time there's an entire Quake there's a Quake convention, but nobody's talking about the Sega Saturn version of Quake, Alan. Yeah, how are you enjoying the list, Stephen Kick? I love the list. Um, I wish there was a little more time to go into the list. Yeah, uh, that's the whole I point of the list, is the that there's no too. time there's no time to talk about the list when you're doing the list because the it's list. the list. The You've main urban- programmer of Quake Saturn version, I think he lives on an island and he's totally a hermit. That's crazy as hell, and I think that is incredible because that is a that is a custom that is not the Quake engine. That is a custom engine That's right. that uses that it just they basically just took the game Quake and they put it into a completely different engine. I think it broke him. And it's, I think uh, it's, I think it's, that's it's, what happened. He he took a boat out to an island somewhere in the Puget Sound and he's never been heard from again. I mean that's what an incredible story. You could make a you could make a movie about that. You could, you could make, make a documentary game about out of that. that. You could make him into a character in a game. In a with game. Spawn and Shadowhawk in 1600s. In a, a, in a weird he could island. be the child. He I think we might do. This, we, I mean, it just write, it just writes itself. We it writes itself. Really much have like, to start much like the list. So let's go right back into the list. We oh, got yeah. Soul of the Samurai. Soul of the Samurai is, of course, the it's a wonder. It's a fixed camera, pre-rendered background samurai action game set in feudal Japan. Alan, right. Alan, have you ever been to feudal Japan? Once. Well. It's an incredible place to set a game in the samurai universe. These are these are fire these are fighters, Alan. These are gladiators of, of the of the greatest order. They are absolutely willing to die for their for themselves, for the for the emperor or themselves or the warlords they serve. You can't well when they're fighting with the warlords, they're different things. I think they call them like uh Ronin. I'm, yes, and I'm like this a, is ro- called a Robbie Ronin in that and I would it was die followed, in any moment for Robbie. And it was preceded by, but we're actually, Way of the Samurai isn't even on the list. It's See? actually Soul of the Samurai, which is the PlayStation 1 game that preceded the Way of the Samurai series. There's three Way of the Samurai games, but there's only one sort, sort of the Samurai. Stephen Kick, are you willing to consider remastering Soul of the Samurai for the, for the PlayStation 1 Put it in one of the ones, 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 put it in one of the 